Hey everyone, this is MC. In this video, I have a nice kids haircut. I'll be showing you a different technique for blending. Usually, I am showing you the very advanced techniques uh, with razor, but today I'm gonna switch it and show you a technique that uses uh, blending shears or blending scissors for change. Uh, one thing about this haircut is actually uh, not edited so you're gonna have to stick around for the full 18 minutes of the haircut um, so uh, I just wanted to kind of leave this one as it is and uh, not really blend, you know edit it and cut it down any shorter so first step as usually in my uh, uh, hair cutting system the way I cut hair I damp the hair slightly as you can see it's slightly damp and then I comb, comb it into the style that I want to create and I comb also hair on the sides in the back uh, in the natural uh, state where it naturally falls that way it is easier for me to uh, you know uh, remove the bulk with my uh, heavy duty clippers and uh, do my best uh, with connecting the top with the sides with uh, really the first step right here as you can see I'm trying to remove that heavy line that usually stays behind when you use scissors I mean uh, clippers when you are removing the bulk so this is really important step uh, it is very important you have few things that you have to consider one you have to remove the bulk two you have to try not to leave this line as you can see that I, let, I kind of purposely left it slightly heavier than I usually do so that way I can demonstrate a technique with a, a blending technique with a thinning uh, or blending scissors second thing you should consider when you use this technique is also creating the shape of your style that you're creating and also the shape of the head you have to make sure that you create a correct shape here I'm gonna do a taper on the back hairline and also on sideburns and slightly closer towards the bottom I start with my clippers uh, closed my clippers are zero gap, so they cut a little closer than they would originally when you get them from the factory. And then uh, here really it's only the matter of, uh, you know, when you are blending this part is of closing and opening your blade. So in this haircut, I'm not going to go very close to the skin. I'm only going to go close uh, around the ears and the nape area. So that was my first step. I did zero, basically with my closed uh, blade. And then I also worked with my open blade there. So really when my fading stopped there, uh, that was about half. And now I'm using uh, one inch or one uh, eighth of an inch not one inch but number one or one eighth of an inch and I'm gonna work on that line I'm sorry here for me turning my back to you you cannot see what I'm doing but as I said I'm not going to edit this video so I left it just the way it is this is very simple haircut there is really nothing to it as you can see the first step was uh, removing the bulk using one and a half. Now just uh, I started my uh, taper with the open blade, then I closed it down to zero. And now I used one eighth of an inch, uh, tried my best to soften that line. And now I'm using one sixteen of an inch and hopefully that will uh, remove that line totally and I will have uh, smooth uh, transition from zero to one and a half to a long top so as you can see this really in real time this really doesn't take much time 
at all. Uh, we are already five minutes into a haircut right now. And uh, the fading and the taper is almost coming towards the end. You can see around the ears it's pretty clean. It looks pretty nice. Uh, it has really nice taper. It starts, it starts from zero and goes to uh, one and a half. So now that that's about it for uh, clippers. Within uh, five minutes, we are done with the clipper work. <coughs> Excuse me. Here I'm using a 4420 uh, blending uh, shears. We are having a lot of trouble here with the uh, focus. These are old uh, barber shears that uh, old barbers used to love for blending. I actually recently got them, and here I'm working with them. I'm still experimenting with them. I'm not sure why they were so famous back in the 70s and 80s, so I'll find out. But I, in general, I have uh, blending shears. Uh, it's just I heard about these, so I want to check, you know, and see what they are all about. So here I learned something actually here from some of my barbers. When they do this part, they first use uh, regular shears and then they go back with the blending, uh, you know, shears, which kind of doesn't make no sense uh, to me at least. I think you should use blending shears first. Do your best removing that line, the weight, and the, you know, and blend as best you can like that. And then you can go back now with the regular scissors and kind of just refine it if there is any long hairs that are sticking around or stuff like that. You remove them because these are blending shears and they don't cut 100%. So you should go back with the regular shears and then, uh, you know, clean up. Just the way I do with a razor. I would use the razor first and then I'll go back with the shears and uh, kind of clean up, you know, see if there's any hairs. They are longer and remaining but as you can see the, the taper looks pretty good I mean the blending looks pretty good with these uh, shears or scissors however you like to call them All right, so now, as I said, I move in with my uh, regular shears. The scissors I'm using are six and a half inch. They are convex edge. Uh, they are offset. The handle is offset. Uh, and they're really good. The brand is actually Mizutani, so uh, it's a pretty good brand. This type of scissors usually go around 500 bucks. But you know, really, you get what you pay for. So uh, they're not bad. They're actually pretty good scissors. As you can see so far, we are eight minutes into a haircut and we are looking pretty good so far with the sides and connecting the sides with the top. I think this looks pretty good. We have a fine taper in the bottom uh, and it's connected with the top pretty good. All we have to do is now just remove some length from the top uh, and then uh, blow dry in style. Usually I like to start pretty much or I would say 90% of the times cutting the top from the crown and moving forward I take about uh, a quarter of an inch sections comb them straight up at 90 degrees and then uh, you know remove the length that you like whatever that may be it is important that you cut between first and second knuckle uh, so that you avoid uh, you know nicking yourself uh, usually people end up making themselves between the knuckles uh, you know because they go too far as well it is important that you rest your your uh, stationary blade on your index finger and that you only move your uh, thumb when you are cutting as you can see here see I'm only moving my thumb so I did uh, 
cut the top. Now I'm just cutting the back of it. All right, now I'm going to just break the hair a little bit for texture. And I'm using my uh, blending shears. I'm taking some weight out so that way when he styles it, he has some movement. Now, this is one way to do this. The other way, obviously, it is, it is with a razor. It's a personal preference from barber to barber. Myself, I'm more of a razor person. I think razor actually gives you slightly better result in my mind, but uh, this is another way and I don't reject it. I mean, uh, if this is what you like, if this is easier for you, then uh, this is good. Uh, however, I think uh, if you want to be a master barber or stylist, you should learn all aspects. Uh, and there are times also when you cannot use uh, blending shears that you should use a razor and vice versa uh, so uh, it's just I think it's good to learn all and uh, be well-rounded uh, barber and stylist so that you can really uh, cater to pretty much everyone that comes to your shop uh, I have developed uh, my system MC barber system over the last 17 years uh, and really my system is very, very uh, comprehensive, I, was, I should say, I believe. Uh, it really covers all aspects of men's uh, barbering and hairstyling, uh, really to the, all the way to the top. And we have four categories. Uh, we have a clipper category that, uh, you know, has a, a bar, I believe, well, I got to check. I have the list there of all different techniques, but we have well, like uh, clipper over comb, uh, clipper with a comb, uh, fanning, uh, clipper over knuckles, <coughs> fading with a comb, fading with the guards. You have a lot of different techniques. Then we have uh, a scissor category that has, I believe, 10 different uh, techniques. Uh, then we have razor category that I believe has eight techniques. And then blow drying and styling, which is probably the most difficult one. That alone, preparing for the world competition, uh, really is the best thing I have ever done uh, regarding that category. I literally took, probably without exaggeration, uh, I don't even know how many hours. You know, at least 150 hours of uh, classes with a world class educators um, uh, actually uh, two world champions and one was uh, uh, second in the world men's hairstyling i took so many classes on that and really that's the best thing i ever done uh, regarding styling i learned how to properly blow dry and style hair i learned how to uh, you know prepare the hair for a style and this is really an art itself so our system now is really complete. We offer classes right now uh, in our barber shop. Uh, pro private classes are held on Sunday and Monday. And uh, uh, this could be one-on-one -on -one or your whole crew. You can bring your whole uh, crew. Or we also travel so we can come and, uh, to your own barber shop or salon and uh, you know give you two-day seminar if you want or so on. Uh, for right now, we just travel in the United States. We don't go out of the United States, although we do get a lot of uh, emails and texts uh, from mostly Brazil, and I really want to shout out to Brazil. Uh, in South America in general, we get a lot of views and a lot of comments, uh, and we appreciate uh, your support. And we are really glad that you are learning from us and that you are benefiting from my videos. But here in the United States, if you are interested, uh, make sure you can contact us through our website, mcbarber.com, or you can call directly to our uh, shop. You can also find uh, the number for my barber shop uh, on my website, mcbarber.com, and you can schedule your next uh, educational seminar, whether it's in our shop or your shop, uh, whether it's 
local or around the United States. Uh, definitely you will benefit a lot. You'll learn how to properly, you know, uh, do consultation on your clients, how to properly execute uh, different techniques, and you'll learn all the latest trends uh, for men's hairstyling and how to achieve them. And really this styling is one of the most difficult to master. As well, I do training for uh, uh, barber competitions, the local barber competitions here in the United States. Uh, so if you are interested in competing, we also offer classes on that, how to pick the right style and how to create that style for the competition. Besides that, we have a 40 hour uh, workshop in our, our, in our barber shop. You actually come and you shadow me for 40 hours. That is Tuesday through Saturday uh, from 9 to 6. And actually, I think this is the most beneficial of all uh, classes because you get uh, to uh, see different techniques applied in different uh, haircuts. Uh, you get to see them over and over. Uh, and you see how I do uh, different hairstyles, how I approach different hairstyles. And the best part is actually repetition, seeing over and over. Uh, it really, you know, sits in your head. And then you bring your, uh, you know, many and your tools and so on. And then, uh, you know, you basically practice right next to my station and I coach you on how to properly execute the techniques with razor, with scissors, with paper, with a blow dryer styling. So these are the uh, beneficial things that we offer for barbers today. So we are here closing on our haircut. We are about 17 minutes in right now. Now this is beginning to the end. 17 minutes. This is how we usually work every day. We're going to put a little product here in Otto's haircut. Otto is one of my longtime clients. I've been cutting his hair for quite a while. And voila, it looks very nice. Uh, dealing with the cowlicks is also another thing that uh, we need to point out and teach how to properly deal with the cowlicks. And also the hairline, where should you put the line here, the part. This is one of the things that I see a lot. People are not sure where to put the uh, part. Usually I like to put a part right at the corner of the receiving hairline or, or you know, at the corner there and go back straight to the crown. But that also depends on the haircut that he's getting. If you are cutting all the way to the line like in this haircut and if the shape of the head allows for this to be done. So in his case, it's possible. But a lot of times, it depends on the shape of the head. If he has a round shaped head, this, this would not be allowed. This, that would not be possible. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of the pictures. Thank you. Until next time. Please don't forget to subscribe. mcbarber.com is my website.